We a lot of times we get beside ourselves and we think, well, I don't know, maybe this is not like it should be or that's what it should be and so forth and so on. Maybe some of you watching saying, well, I don't understand this or don't understand that. But And there's a lot more scriptures go with us. Like Psalms 107 verse 20 says, the Bible says God sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Well, he, he healed them. That's past tense. And delivered, that's past tense. He sent his word and done it. That's how he done it was with his word. But his word that we get a hold of and we can get in our heart and speak out of our mouth and have that faith of God coming out of our mouth, speaking it out, then that's how we can imitate God like a child does his father. Amen? And then it says in Isaiah 55 and verse 10 or 11, I believe it's verse 11, God said, my word won't return to me void. It won't return to me void. But it will accomplish that whereunto I sent it. Where did he send it? I sent my word to heal them and deliver them from their destructions. My word won't return to me void, but it will accomplish that whereunto I sent it. What did he send his word to do? He sent his word for one purpose, Brenda Gross, and that was for people like you and I and Kenneth and all of us watching, listening, here, wherever you might be or at. He sent his word to do that. No other thing did he do it. He sent his word to take care of us. He sent his word. Why did he send it? So that we could get hit in our heart and we could believe it and speak it out of our mouth and that we could mimic or mock or imitate him like a child would its father. He sent that hammer and that saw and that tape measure and them ladders and everything so that we could build that house like our daddy. But he sent his word because that's his tool to build with is his word, the word. So he sent that tool to us that we could use it so that our house could stay in order and be built right and so that we could build the body of Christ the way it should be built. Amen? He sent his word and done it. Didn't send nothing else. A lot of times... We want to pray and beg and plead and go on, but that ain't going to get nothing done. The, the thing that moves God, I'm, I'm getting off track, but the thing that moves God, it ain't, it's not crying. It's not feeling lowly and humble and, you know, I, oh, anybody should feel sorry for me. Now I've got myself worked into shape here and I'm a crying and snot of running, and I've gotten off the shape there was, I know that that'll have to, God will have to feel sorry for me, he'll have to feel for me, and me getting like that. That don't affect God one bit. His word spoke back to him, is the only thing that moves him. Amen? And that's what he's waiting on. He's waiting on us to quit going by our feelings, and going by what ain't. Alphine said, and Uncle Tom, and Grandpa Jack, and Grandma Jane, and all them, he's waiting on us to come to grips with what this book says that he sent to us his word within these pages. He sent his word to deliver us from our destructions. And if we will get a hold of that one tool that he sent us, and we get that in our inward man. That's the way I started out talking about our heart or inward man. If we will put that in our heart, believe that in our heart, and speak that out of our mouth, then we're imitating our Father. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, Proverbs 4.20, he said, My son, attend unto my words, incline thy ear unto my saying, and let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. Now, 
That's the reason I want to read over this. I want to go a little bit different. That's the way the Lord led me to do it. To keep our eyes on the word heart and soul. He said, don't let these sayings, these words that I spoke to you, that I sent to you as a tool to be able to keep your lives the way they should be. He said, keep them in the midst of your heart, that inward man, the real you. Keep it. It's whose job is it to keep it? Our job is to keep it in there. It ain't God's job. It ain't the Holy Ghost's job. It's our job to keep the Word in our heart. Amen? For they, what is they? That's these words that have the tool of God, the tools of God that He sent to heal us that's not going to return to Him void that will deliver us from our destructions. These words... They are life unto those that find them, and they are health to all their flesh. Now, if we don't believe that, and we think that it's impossible to believe that, and we're still uh, going to church, and we're still reading the Bible, and we're still listening, and uh, seemingly think we're going to go to heaven, and we can't believe stuff like this, children, we've missed it. We need to cut loose Kenneth, of all of our 